So now let's talk about this muon experiment I alluded to earlier. So this is an experiment that was carried out in 1963 by um, two Harvard physicists, Frisch and Smith. And they um, put a muon detector on the top of Mount Washington and counted the muons. And they also then put their detector down at sea level and counted the muons and looked to see um, the what the rate of muons were. How many muons did you see up here? How many muons did you see down here? And um, in addition, they were looking at muons just at a particular speed. And the speed they chose happened to be this. So muons created by these cosmic ray collisions are going really fast. That's more than 99% the speed of light. And it's possible to set your muon detector up so that it only picks up muons of a particular speed. So we know the speed of the muons. So muons are zipping by, they're going down towards Earth all the time. And um, we're going to measure muons here. And then we're going to measure muons here down at the ground. So let's think about these measurements as a pair of events. Well, we know the distance between these events, the spatial separation. It's the height of Mount Washington, um, which is, what, 9,007 meters. And you did, in the in the quiz, you just converted, um, not 9,000, excuse me, 1,907 meters. You converted that into special relativity units, and you should have found um, about 6.4 microseconds. So, delta x, which is 1,907 meters, is about 6.4 microseconds. And it's just a coincidence that muons are usually drawn with um, like this um, after the Greek letter mu and micro also happens to be abbreviated with mu. So all sorts of mu's um, in this video. Alright, so um, the, the spatial separation between A and B is um, this. And we want to know, we're, we're thinking about a muon that's making this journey down here. We'd want to know, well, what's the time between these events? How long does it take the muon to go from A to B? Well, we can figure that out because we know the speed. So delta x is V delta t. Distance equals rate times time. Let's solve that for delta t. Delta t is... Um, delta x over v. But when we know delta x and we know v, 6.4 over 0.994. And that is, let's see, 6.4 divided by 0.994. 6.438, I'm going to round that to 6.44. So 6.44 microseconds. Okay, so we have the spatial separation and importantly the time separation between these two events. So let's analyze this situation from the point of view of us here on the Earth. And we could be on the top of the mountain, the bottom of the mountain. The main thing is that we're at rest compared to the Earth. And so we would say, hey, there's a muon, there's a muon here. And then 6.44 seconds later, we'd expect this muon down here. But wait a minute. I know that the half-life for a muon is... 1.52 microseconds. So this is like three or four half-lives. So I wouldn't expect most of the muons that we see up here to survive down there. In fact, let's calculate 
um, the fraction or percentage of muons that we would expect to survive this journey from A to B. And that's a calculation you also did for um, you for the um, uh, on the quiz. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this part of it. So we've got half, and it's six point four four over one point five two. Both of those in microseconds. So let's do that. Six point four four divided by one point five two. Four point two four. So this is a half. to the 4.24. So this says that this is more than four half-length lives from the point of view of the muon. Like, that's a long time. Um, we'd expect a lot, um, in fact, the vast majority of the, of the muons would be gone by then. Let's, let's calculate that and see. I'm going to evaluate now half to the 4.24.5 raised to the 4.24. And I get 0 0.053, 0 0.053, or 5.3% of the muons survive. So um, we could do this experiment, hike up to the top of the mountain. Uh, see how many muons are passing us per hour or per day, then go down and um, do the same experiment uh, at sea level, and we would expect to see only 5.3 as many uh, muons, because the sad fact would be, apparently, that most of these muons don't survive this journey and don't make it from the top of the mountain down here. So that's the point of view from us on the Earth. But let's um, analyze this a different way, thinking about this from the point of view of the muon. How is it experiencing time? So let's think of this from the muon's point of view. Now, in classical physics, Newtonian or Galilean physics, that's a crazy question. What do you mean the muon's point of view? How, does, how is a muon experiencing time? Time is time. It's going to experience the time between these events as 6.44 microseconds, just like we do here on Earth. But in special relativity, time is different. Time is coordinate dependent, reference frame dependent. So let's see if we can use a metric equation to puzzle this through. The muon is, right, moving at a constant speed of this, and it passes point A, and then it passes point B. So the muon is going to measure um, the space-time interval. The muon is an inertial clock um, that is present at both event A and B. So how the muon experiences time um, is going to be according to the space-time interval. And, okay, so this is a weird thing. Muons are elementary particles. What do I mean by experience time? Well, the time for their internal processes, the time that they're thinking about, okay, they don't think either, but um, this time, how their half-life plays out, um, that every 1.52 seconds, there's a 50% chance that it decays. That time is going to be the we need to think about that time in terms of the space-time interval. So, um, happily, we know the formula for the space-time interval. Um, maybe I'll do this in blue, since I drew the muons in blue. So, delta S squared is delta T squared minus delta X squared. Or I could square root both sides to get rid of this square over here. So let me do that, and well, we know delta t and delta x. So delta t and delta x, these are measured in the Earth frame, but we can use that to figure out the space-time interval, and the space-time interval is the same for everybody. It's a reference frame independent quantity. So let's plug in. I've got this time, 6.44. Four 
microseconds squared. Then I subtract the spatial separation, that's 6.4 microseconds squared. And then I need to square root the whole thing. So that's a job for a calculator. And let's see what we get. 6.44 squared minus 6.4 squared equals square root 0 0.7166. Let's call that 0 0.72 microseconds. Aha. Notice how different that is from delta t. So here on Earth, we, are, uh, we see a time between events A and B, 6.44, but the muon, zipping along at this crazy fast speed, says, no, I don't experience 6.44. I only experience 0 0.72 microseconds of time elapsing from here to here. And then accordingly, the muons aren't going to decay as much. 0 0.72 is just a fraction of one half-life. Um, so let's, let's calculate this again. Let's see what fraction, according to the muons, what fraction of them are going to survive this journey? And this is going to be good news for the muons. All right, 0 0.72, sorry, let me move that up a little bit. 0 0.72 over 1.52. So I'm doing just what I did here, but now I'm using the space-time interval, which is the time I should be using for the muons. That's the muons' time. So again, a job for a calculator, 0 0.72 divided by 1.52, that's 0 0.47, this is a half to the 0 0.47. So what that means is, is that this time interval, the space-time interval experienced by the muons is a little less than half of a half-time, a ha half-life. So let's, let's calculate this now, 0.5 raised to the 0 0.47 is 0 0.722. I'll just round that to 0 0.72, which is 72% survive. All right, so we have two different predictions. The um, Galileo and Newton would say time is time, and uh, the muons, they're going to experience this true universal time. Their time interval is 6.44 seconds. Only 5.3% of the muons will survive to Earth. Special relativity says, no, the muons, believe it or not, experience a different time because they're moving relative to us, and in fact, their, their time is really, really different, and so 72% of them are going to survive. So um, Smith and Frisch, as I said, did this experiment. They measured the rate of muons at this speed at the top of Mount Washington, um, and then they measured the rate in the sense of number of muons per hour per day, I'm not sure their units, uh, down here. And if Newton was right, then the muon count down here would only be about 5% of what was on top of the mountain. If Einstein was right, the muon count down here would be around 72%. And, unsurprisingly, it turns out that Einstein was right. So this is a nice example of, again, using this metric equation to compare time differences, time intervals in different frames. And in this case, we were able to connect up with an experiment, an experiment that shows beyond any doubt that the Einsteinian view of time is correct.